In the early 12th century, after the First Crusade's successful reconquest of the Holy Lands, the newly formed Crusader states faced increasing hostility from their Islamic neighbors. Fledgling Christian nations, surrounded by a sea of hostile Islamic factions, faced chronic shortages and manpower. After the First Crusade in 1099, most of the participating Latin knights and lords did not settle in the newly reconquered lands, but instead returned to Europe. This created a fragile situation in Outremer. Although the city of Jerusalem itself was secure, many of the surrounding areas were not. Bandits and marauding highwaymen would routinely prey upon Christian pilgrims, looting and slaughtering them sometimes by the hundreds, especially when traveling inland from the coastline at Jaffa towards Jerusalem. In an attempt to protect these pilgrims, small religious Christian orders were formed, which began to take on military roles in Outremer. A few of these institutions, such as the Knights Templar, founded in 1119, were officially endorsed by the Pope and became favored charities, attracting donations from all over Christendom, as well as volunteers from peasant and noble families alike. Seventy years after the founding of the Templar Knights, another order was founded, the Order of Brothers of the German House of St. Mary in Jerusalem, also known as the Teutonic Knights. While the Knights Templar was heavily French, the Teutonic Knights were Germans. Founded in Acre in 1192, the order was originally founded as a hospice brotherhood for pilgrims. Brothers of the Order were recognized by a black cross over a white mantle. Many of its members were trained knights who abandoned the military life in favor of religious service, helping the sick and poor. However, the need for fighting men in Outremer became apparent over time, and the Grand Master, Hermann von Salza, transformed it into a military order. In 1187, the Ayyubid Sultanate recaptured Jerusalem from the Crusaders. The Teutonic Knights received papal orders for more Crusades to retake and hold Jerusalem for Christendom and to defend the Holy Land against Muslim Saracens. During the Crusade of Frederick II in 1228, the order accompanied the Holy Roman Emperor in his military expedition to the Holy Land, which resulted in the Crusaders regaining control over the city of Jerusalem. However, this good fortune would not last, as a little over a decade later the truce ended and Muslim forces captured Jerusalem from the Christians once again. Despite stubborn resistance from the Crusaders during the 13th century, the United Islamic assaults proved to be overwhelming. At the Siege of Acre in 1291, the last Christian stronghold fell, and Crusaders faced total defeat in the Holy Land. However, earlier in the 13th century, it had already become apparent to the German order's leader, Grand Master Hermann von Salza, that the Teutonic Knights' ultimate destiny did not lie exclusively in the Holy Land. And it was Europe, not the Middle East, where the Teutonic Knights would truly make their mark on history. In 1226, a Polish noble, Conrad I, Duke of Masovia, appealed to the Teutonic Knights for aid. He asked them to help defend his borders and subjugate the pagan Baltic Prussians, with whom the Polish had been fighting for many years. The Teutonic Grand Master Hermann von Salza, eager to accept the offer, met with the Holy Roman Emperor Frederick II in Germany. Hermann explained to Frederick that the subjugation of the Prussians would make the empire's borders easier to defend against invaders. And in 1226, Frederick II gave his approval for the venture and the Golden Bull of Rimini. The Teutonic Knights received the territory of Kalmerland to use as a base for their operations, and Hermann dispatched a small contingent of knights to the area to begin the crusade and establish a presence in Prussia.
By this time, the Christian kingdoms of Western and Central Europe had already been crusading in the Baltic region for many years. For Christianity, it was Europe's last frontier. East of the Vistula River lay a dangerous land, vast wilderness, thick forest, swamps and hills limited human settlement to the rivers and coastal regions. Western missionaries began visiting the region, attempting to convert the pagans in as early as the 10th century. However, this had little effect. The old Prussian natives, consisting of roughly 11 different tribes, were ethnically Balts, much like their Lithuanian pagan neighbors to the northeast. Prussian religion was a form of Indo-European nature worship very much akin to some early Celtic, Germanic, Greek, and Roman religions. High-ranking Prussian nobles often took multiple wives, as polygamy was a common practice among the Prussian natives. Prussian women were rare, however, as newborn females were often abandoned at birth, resulting in Prussian fathers fetching a large bride price for marriage arrangements. Slave raids into neighboring territories were not uncommon, in which Prussian warriors were known to kidnap foreign women. In 1217, Pope Honorius III sent a papal bull allowing Catholic priests to begin preaching a crusade against the Prussians. The following year, Prussians coordinated a particularly devastating attack, plundering 300 cathedrals and churches in Masovia and Chelmoland. Alongside the spread of Christianity and the opportunity for territorial conquest, the desire to end these pagan raids was a significant motivating factor for the Crusaders in Prussia. After receiving the claim to Cumberland in 1230, a small force of seven knights and 100 sergeants and squires under the command of Conrad von Landsberg built a castle at Vogelsong. They then began launching raids against the pagans across the Vistula. More reinforcements soon arrived. Under the command of Hermann Balk, 20 knights and 200 sergeants arrived at Vogelsong soon after the castle's construction was completed. The Crusaders then launched a campaign against the neighboring Pomeranian clan. Advancing from Nassau, with the aid of Conrad of Masovia, Balk marched on the pagan occupied settlement of Ragal, capturing that settlement and also destroying another Prussian fort at Gursk. During this campaign, a local Prussian captain defected to the side of the Teutonic Knights and helped them capture the Pomeranian leader, Pepin. By 1232, Prussian resistance in Kalmarlan had ended. The Knights built fortresses at Chelmo and Thorn, and Pope Gregory IX, encouraged by the Knights' initial success, called for 5,000 more reinforcements. The Teutonic Knights were few in number. The early campaigns were primarily composed of German, Polish, and Pomeranian crusaders, as well as some Prussian militia and auxiliaries. The local Polish and Pomeranian dukes proved essential through their providing of troops and military bases. After a campaign was completed, most of the crusaders would typically return home, leaving the monastic Teutonic Knights with the task of consolidating the new territory and garrisoning the newly built forts. German settlers from the Holy Roman Empire also began to immigrate eastward, allowing the foundation of many new towns. While earlier Polish expeditions had usually marched eastward into the Prussian wilderness, the Teutonic Knights advanced more slowly. The order instead initially focused their attention in the west and began establishing fortresses along the Vistula River. In 1233, the Teutonic Knights renewed their campaign against the Pomeranians. Leading a force of 10,000 crusaders, they established a fortress at Marienwerder. After this task was complete, 
the Crusaders met the Prussians at the Battle of the River Sorge, delivering a crushing defeat to the pagans. After this, the location of this battle was henceforth known by the locals as the Field of the Dead. This victory allowed the Crusaders to seize even greater control of South Prussia. In 1234, the order built a fortress at Raiden, which helped to stabilize Kalmerland's eastern border. Over the following decades, Prussian lands are slowly swallowed up piecemeal, as the Teutonic Order used its effective strategy of building a castle, pacifying the surrounding territory, and then advancing to repeat the process. In 1236, with the support of Henry III, Margrave of Meissen, the order advanced north along the banks of the Vistula River and completed the conquest of Pomerania, forcing most of the natives there into submission. In 1237, the Crusaders campaigned against the Pajasanians, defeating the Prussian riverboats in several naval engagements. Settlements at Elbing and Christburg were also founded that year. Beginning in 1238, the Teutonic Knights started campaigning against the Bartians, Natangians, and Warmians. During this campaign, the Warmians slaughtered a small force of knights who were besieging the fort of Balga. When news of this reached Marshal Dietrich von Berheim, he returned with a larger army and laid siege to the fort. Severely outnumbered, the Warmian commander Kadrun suggested that the pagans should surrender to the knights and convert to Christianity. Instead, the pagans chose to mutiny and kill their own general. As a result, Marshal Dietrich ordered his forces to assault the walls, and the fort was successfully captured by the Teutonic Knights. A Prussian counterattack to reclaim the fort at Balga failed, and the Crusaders were able to consolidate their gains in Atangia and Bartia with the help of seasonal reinforcements led by Otto I, Duke of brunswick Lunenburg. Alarmed about the order's rapid expansion into Prussia, Swantopelk, a Christian Pomeranian duke allied with the conquered Prussian pagans and launched an armed rebellion against the Crusaders. This started the first pagan uprising of 1242. The Teutonic Knights' ability to respond during this period was weakened as their manpower was limited and many of the allied Polish princes were feuding amongst themselves. Before the arrival of the Teutonic Knights, the Prussian tribes had never before united and acted as one. Nevertheless, in 1244, the Prussians defeated the Knights in battle at Rinsen and captured many of the Order's castles. The Prussians, however, lacked the siege capabilities to finish off the Knights, and the lost territory was eventually recaptured. By 1249, the uprising was over, and the Teutonic Knights and Prussian clans agreed to the Treaty of Christburg. This treaty granted civil liberties and considerable autonomy to Prussian Christian converts, while most of the clans agreed to the terms of the treaty, intermittent fighting continued. Shortly after the Treaty of Christburg, a force of knights under the command of Marshal Heinrich Battel was ambushed by Natangians. The Crusaders retreated to the nearby village of Krucken, where the Prussians followed them and laid siege. Lacking supplies to endure a long siege, the Crusaders bargained for surrender. The Marshal and three other knights were to remain as hostages, while the others were to lay down their weapons. The Natangians broke the agreement and massacred the Crusaders, including 54 knights. Many were executed in religious ceremonies or tortured to death, and Johann, the vice knight commander of Balga, had his severed head mockingly displayed on a spear. This barbarous act gave the Teutonic Knights reason to believe that the Prussians were uncivilized and without honor. 
Never again did the knights surrender to the pagans in Prussia. Although this defeat was severe, the Natangians failed to exploit their victory, and they did not make any further offensive moves against the order. It took the Teutonic Knights two years to fully recover and avenge this massacre. By 1250, most of Western Prussia had been successfully conquered. The Teutonic Knights continued their advance to the north and east and began campaigning against the Sambians. In 1252, Knight Commander Heinrich Stango of Christburg led an army across the Vistula Lagoon into Sambian territory. However, the Knight Commander was slain and the army was defeated in battle. To replace these lost soldiers, the Pope and the Teutonic Grand Master began preaching a crusade against the Sambians, and the order sent emissaries to the kings of Hungary Bohemia, and the German princes of the Holy Roman Empire. The Prussians of Samland proved themselves to be a worthy adversary indeed, and so in the meantime the Crusaders elected to wait for reinforcements. Most of the other clans surrounding Samland were decimated, however, including the neighboring resisting Galindian tribe, who the order had subjugated by 1253. In January of 1255, a crusader army of 60,000 men, including Austrians, Bohemians, Saxons, and Moravians, under the command of King Ottokar II of Bohemia, Otto III of Brandenburg, Rudolf of Habsburg, and Bishop Bruno of Almutz, arrived in Prussia, and the order launched a second campaign against the pagans. The crusaders crushed the Sambians at the Battle of Rudau, and the fort's garrison surrendered and underwent baptism. The Crusader army then continued, advancing towards Coidenau, Waldau, Kaiman, and Tapiao, capturing those settlements one by one. The Prussians who accepted baptism were spared, but many of the pagans who refused were exterminated in mass. The Crusaders founded the city of Konigsberg and Samland in honor of the Bohemian king as well as the city of Brownsburg, named after Bishop Bruno of Almutz. The Knights also built the castle of Weilau at the junction of the Pregel and Owl rivers. By the end of January 1255, Samland was conquered by the Teutonic Knights in a campaign lasting less than a month. Farther north, occurring in parallel to the Prussian Crusade, was the conquest of the territory consisting of modern-day Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania. This was known as the Livonian Crusade, which began in 1199 when Pope Innocent III declared a crusade against the Baltic and Finnic pagans to, quote, defend the Christians of Livonia. Danish and German settlers started the initial process of Christianization in Livonia and the territory gradually came under the control of another Catholic military order, the German Livonian Brothers of the Sword. In 1236, at the Battle of Saul, the Samogitian and Simogallian clans defeated the Livonian Knights decisively. In the aftermath of this defeat, many of the Livonian settlements were conquered by the pagans, and the order was on the verge of being wiped out when the Teutonic Knights absorbed them in 1237 becoming the Livonian branch of the Teutonic Order. Also significant during this time was the Teutonic Order's invasion of Russia. Although the Russians were already Christian during this time, the Eastern Orthodox Christians in Russia differed from the Catholics in culture and doctrine, and the Pope still saw them as barbarians. Based on papal letters from 1229, the Catholic Bishop of Finland requested the Pope to enforce a trade embargo against the Novgorod Republic on the Baltic Sea. The Pope requested Crusaders send troops to fight the Novgorodians under the pretext of protecting Finland. In 1237, the Mongol horde under Batu Khan was ravaging Eastern Europe. 
Most of the Russian principalities tried to resist the Mongols, but these efforts were in vain. The Russian cities of Kolomna, Ryazan, Moscow, Rostov, Dmitrov, and many others were annihilated, burnt to the ground, and their inhabitants indiscriminately slaughtered by the Mongols. The only major cities to escape destruction were Novgorod and Piskov. The Mongols planned an assault on Novgorod, but the city was spared when the city's leader, Prince Alexander Nevsky, made the choice to surrender and pay tribute to the Mongols. Hoping to exploit Novgorod's weakness in the wake of these Mongol invasions, the Teutonic Knights invaded Novgorodian territory, taking control of several Russian settlements around Novgorod, including Piskov, in the autumn of 1240. The Novgorodians resisted and regained Piskov in 1241, but the hostilities between Novgorod and the Order continued. In the spring of 1242, the Teutonic Knights, with a force of around 2,600 men, led by Prince Bishop Hermann of Dorpat, defeated a detachment of Novgorodians about 20 kilometers south of the fortress of Dorpat. The Novgorodian forces, led by Prince Alexander Nevsky, with an army of 5,000 men, met the Crusaders at Lake Pipus. Alexander Nevsky saved the city of Novgorod once again when he defeated and routed the Teutonic army on the frozen lake in a legendary battle known as the Battle on the Ice. The legacy of this battle was important because it halted the eastward expansion of the Teutonic Order and established a permanent borderline dividing Eastern Orthodoxy from Western Catholicism. As a result, the Teutonic Order dropped all of its territorial claims over Russian lands. Meanwhile, to the south, in Prussia, the Christianization of those Teutonic lands was well underway. To the northeast of Prussia, the Livonian Order had been invading and attempting to colonize Lithuanian Samogitia. The Samogitians refused to convert to Christianity and stubbornly sought to retain the independence of their pagan religion. The Samogitian pagans inflicted two crushing defeats on the Order at the Battle of Skuadas in 1259 and again at the Battle of Derb in 1260. The pagans saw these victories as proof that their pre-Christian beliefs were legitimate and these events inspired the pagans to rebel against the order once again. This revolt was known as the Great Pagan Uprising of 1260 to 1274, during which the natives not only rebelled in Prussia, but also raided Livonia, Poland, and Volhynia. Every occupied Prussian clan took up arms against the Teutonic Knights, with the exception of the Pomeranians, who remained loyal to the order. Most of the German order's castles were destroyed in the early 1260s, and an army of reinforcements were defeated at the Battle of Pokarwis in 1261. This caused the uprising to spread even further and put the Teutonic Knights in even greater distress. Despite the encouragement of Pope Urban IV, more reinforcements were slow to arrive, and for a time, the future of the Teutonic order in Prussia looked grim. Luckily for the Germans, the Prussians lacked unity and a common strategy. After successful sieges, the pagans did not garrison the forts, but instead completely destroyed them. And after the massacre of surrendered Teutonic soldiers at the Battle of Krucken in 1249, the Knights refused to negotiate with the Prussians. In 1265, the German order finally started to turn the tide with the arrival of Albert I, Duke of brunswick lunenburg and Henry III, Landgrave of Thuringia. The Livonian order sent reinforcements and the Crusaders lifted the siege of Konigsberg, decisively defeating the Sambians in battle and forcing them to surrender. During the following year, more reinforcements were provided by Margraves Otto III and John I of Brandenburg, building a castle at Ushakovo between Balga and Konigsberg. King Adukar II of Bohemia also returned to Prussia briefly, campaigning in 1267.
The Prussians relied on guerrilla tactics. Using small groups of men, they made quick raids on farms, villages, and border posts. While the Teutonic Order was dependent on reinforcements from Germany, Prussian resources were starting to dwindle. In 1271, the Prussians launched a major offensive. Bartian and Pajasanian forces besieged a border castle, but were then forced to retreat by the arrival of Teutonic Knights from Christburg. When the Knights made camp for the night, they were encircled by Prussian cavalry and slaughtered at the Battle of Pagenston. The Prussians then immediately assaulted Christburg, almost capturing it. However, the battle ended when Teutonic cavalry from Elbing arrived and launched a devastating cavalry charge against the Pagans. The Prussian infantry was decimated while most of the enemy cavalry escaped. In 1272, Margrave Dietrich II of Meissen arrived in Prussia with more reinforcements. The army invaded Natangia, successfully besieging and conquering a Natangian castle. The Natangian leader, Herkes Mont, was forced to withdraw to the forests of southern Prussia. Within a year, he was captured and hanged. The Warmian leader, Glop, was also hanged when his siege campaign on Brandenburg was attacked from the rear and his army decimated. Gradually, the Crusaders killed or forced the surrender of most of the pagan leaders. Prussian natives who refused to convert to Christianity were either forcibly resettled by the Crusaders or exterminated. One by one, the remaining Prussian clans surrendered and the uprising had ended by 1274. As a result of the uprising, many Prussian free peasants were reduced to serfdom and the natives lost the rights they had received in the Treaty of Christburg. The few tribal chiefs who remained in Prussia converted to Christianity and became vassals of the Teutonic Order. After the great pagan uprising was put down, the order then proceeded to conquer the Skaldians, Nadruvians, and Sudovians. Some later Prussian uprisings received the help of neighboring powers such as the Grand Duchy of Lithuania, However, these later uprisings were comparatively much smaller in size and scale, and none seriously threatened the Teutonic Order. By the end of the 13th century, Prussia was firmly under the control of the Teutonic Order. The conquest of Prussia was accomplished with much bloodshed over a span of 50 years. The Teutonic Knights accepted baptism as a form of submission from the conquered Prussians. They would often revert back to their pagan faith, however, Nevertheless, more and more German settlers arrived in the newly conquered lands, and over time, Christianity gradually became the majority faith. By the end of the conquest, most of the Prussian natives who refused to be baptized were either killed or exiled. Some Prussian tribes fled the land and were able to survive by merging and assimilating with the Lithuanians and Sudovians. Beginning in the 1280s, the Teutonic Knights turned their focus on the last pagan land in Europe, the Grand Duchy of Lithuania. Lasting until 1410, the war between Lithuania and the Teutonic Knights was one of the longest wars in the history of Europe. The order had successful campaigns in the border regions, Samogitia and Suvalkija, but captured very little new territory beyond that. The Lithuanian territory came to be quite large, and their state was more centralized and better organized than the Prussians. In the early 14th century, the political situation in the Baltic region started to change. Now that the Prussian pagans had been conquered, Poland and the Teutonic Order no longer had as much common cause as before, and the rapid territorial expansion of the order became alarming to the Polish. Poland, who was originally allied with the Teutonic Order, now began seeing them as rivals. In 1308, the Teutonic Order conquered the city of Danzig, 
and in 1326 the order clashed with the Kingdom of Poland over the territory of Pomerelia, which separated the lands of the order from the territory of the Holy Roman Empire, namely Pomerania. This made relations between the two countries deteriorate even further, and Polish interests started to become more aligned with the Lithuanians. In 1386, Grand Duke Jogela of Lithuania was baptized and accepted Christianity. He married the Queen of Poland, taking the name Vladislaw II, and became King of Poland. This created a personal union between the two countries, which would later be known as the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. While the Lithuanian leader's conversion to Christianity technically rendered the Teutonic Order's Lithuanian Crusade a success, hostilities between the Order and the Commonwealth continued. In 1407, the Teutonic Order reached its greatest territorial extent, including Prussia, Pomerelia, Samogitia, Courland, Livonia, Estonia, Gotland, Dago, Ossel, and the Newmark. In 1410, a combined Polish and Lithuanian army defeated the Teutonic Knights at the Battle of Grunwald. Grand Master Ulrich von Jungingen and many of the Order's other high-ranking nobles fell during the battle. The Polish-Lithuanian army then besieged Marienburg, the capital of the Order but the siege failed thanks to the strong resistance of Heinrich von Plauen. Afterwards, the first Peace of Thorn was signed in 1411. The order retained basically all of its territories, but the sting of defeat at Grunwald was severe, and the Teutonic Order entered into a period of decline. During the rest of the 15th century, Polish-Lithuanian power and influence continued to grow. Prussian lands were ravaged during the Hussite Wars of 1419 to 1434, and the Teutonic Knights also suffered defeat during the Thirteen Years' War of 1454 to 1466, during which the Prussian Confederation, consisting of gentry and burghers from Western Prussia, rose up against the order with help from the Polish crown. As a result, the order was forced to cede Western Prussia to Poland. After the Polish Teutonic War of 1519 to 1521, the order lost its remaining territory in Prussia when the Teutonic Grand Master Albert of Brandenburg resigned from his position as Grand Master and accepted the title Duke of Prussia. Albert converted to Lutheranism in 1525, and in a deal partially brokered by Martin Luther, the Duchy of Prussia became the first Protestant state. In an event known as the Prussian Homage, Albert of Brandenburg secularized the remaining Prussian territories and assumed from his uncle, Sigismund I, King of Poland, the hereditary rights to the Duchy of Prussia as a vassal of the Polish crown. Thus, the Protestant Duchy of Prussia was now a fief of Catholic Poland. After the loss of Prussia in 1525, the Teutonic Order still retained its territories in Livonia and the Holy Roman Empire. The former would eventually also be lost, however, during the Livonian War of 1558 to 1583, during which Livonia was partitioned between Sweden, Poland, Lithuania, Denmark, and Norway. Although the Teutonic Order no longer possessed any contiguous territory, the Catholic Order continued on in the Holy Roman Empire and Germany. The Teutonic Knights' conquest of Prussia had a profound effect on the history of Europe. The Northern Crusades resulted in Prussian lands being repopulated with colonists from Germany, who after the 16th century eventually represented the majority. By the 17th century, the Prussian lands were totally, for all intents and purposes, a German-speaking territory, with the old Prussian language becoming extinct sometime at the beginning of the 18th century. The Prussian state would eventually gain independence from Poland, becoming a kingdom in 1701. And 170 years later, under the leadership of Wilhelm I and Otto von Bismarck, the Kingdom of Prussia would achieve the unification of Germany, founding the German Empire in 1871, 
and laying the foundation for modern Germany.